Yes, the people how we doing, how we doing? So today, I'm gonna answer one of the most common questions I get. Whoa now, almost forgot. Shouts to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Roughly every 37.5 minutes, someone will DM me or email me and say, Joe, I'm skinny fat. What should I do about it? Please help, help a brother out. Sort me out, I'm doughy fix me so usually it's it's a lot longer than that actually it's a life story of everything that happened since they were four but that's what it boils down to and so i'm going to answer that question today as best i can and hopefully it helps a lot of people out so instead of just going through like straight to practical steps which we will actually get to i just want to dive into it and flesh it out a little bit because give a man a fish is this the right phrase give a man a fish and he'll he's got lunch but teach a man to fish and sorted for a while mate. that's the general gist of what I'm saying skinny fat can sound like an oxymoron because how can you possibly be both skinny and fat simultaneously well it's actually pretty easy and hence why it's pretty common so what it's describing is somebody who is moderate to high body fat yet very low muscle mass so just think thin and soft might be a better description although it doesn't really have the same ring to it skinny fat just snappy in it think of someone who is slight in stature but when you grab them they're kind of like wobbly and like they jiggle a bit mate as with a lot of things there isn't a strict definition there's more of a range so skinny fat can look very different on different people some people for example might have just very low muscle mass overall and a generally even spread of body fat whereas others it might be more unevenly distributed they may may have particularly skinny arms but a bit of a pot belly you see that a lot with classic pub goers beer drinker types side note and this is important a lot of people think they are skinny fat when in actual fact they are just skinny so for example let's take two people say they are the same height and they both carry 25 pounds of body fat total let's say person a is 185 pounds which would put their total body fat percentage at 13.5 percent and let's say person b is 135 pounds their total body fat percentage would then be 18.5 percent so quite a considerable difference and that is obviously going to look a lot different on their frame however looking at person b would you really say that they have an excess of body fat or does it just appear that way because of their pretty low muscle mass i would say the latter is true and so that's something to remember the next time you're looking at yourself in the mirror and thinking am i skinny fat because you might not be mate you might actually just be skinny in which case your course of action is dramatically different because you don't need to focus then on trying to shift that body fat but would be better focusing on trying to improve the body fat percentage by increasing your muscle mass i.e getting on a big ruthless filthy bulk mate so to un get skinny fat to get unskinny fat that's not a sentence to not be skinny fat anymore you must understand how you got skinny fat in the first place now for the vast majority of people that is simply a case of a very sedentary lifestyle or more specifically a lack of resistance training so usually it would be people who have either never lifted before or who have had a very long time off lifting for whatever reason and although your diet is obviously going to be a key part in any kind of fitness outcome in this case i would certainly say it's secondary to training because even if you have a pretty shit diet if you are lifting consistently it would be very difficult for you to get skinny fat almost impossible i would actually say that if you've managed that that is quite an achievement and i would congratulate you in some weird way because at worst if you've been lifting you're gonna end up just like bulky fat you know what i mean i don't know what that means i'm bulky fat this is the this is the sign language for bulky fat for dreamer bulk <laughs> what like this? All right, let's get back on task. So I would say people who are probably the most susceptible to becoming skinny fat are probably ectomorphs, who were obviously originally skinny and then ate a lot of shit, mate. Doritos for the lunch every day and no lifting. That's how it happens, right? Joe, we just answer the motherfucking question. I would love to, and I'm going to split this down into two sections. I'm going to cover training first. And then I'm going to talk about nutrition, which I'm going to further subdivide a little bit. So let's tackle training. So to follow from my point of how you got skinny fat in the first place, the first and most important course of action would be to start a solid structured lifting program immediately because 
you can deliberate all you want on should I cut, should I bulk, should I go into a deficit, surplus, try and do both. But all of that will pale into insignificance if you do not have adequate stimulus to affect some kind of positive change in body composition, i.e. adaptation. And in simpler terms, that means you need to be lifting so you're doing something good with your calories. And it's not just this calories in versus calories out game, which is doesn't do fuck all for your physique, mate. Because although it sounds kind of bro -y, your physique is a product of the demand placed on it. And very often, a skinny fat physique is the product of little to no demand. So even if you decided that you couldn't commit to changing your diet one single bit, you know, you are committed to the turkey dinosaur lifestyle and you ain't changing for nobody. If you stick to a solid, consistent resistance training regime, regime sounds a bit like you're gonna do genocide on people, doesn't it? That's weird. Routine, <laughs> then that is gonna be the main thing that's gonna help get you out of this skinny fat vortex that you currently reside in. And it doesn't even have to be anything advanced. You don't have to buy a program off anybody or pay any money for anything. I would just choose some basic, high intensity, high reward movements, and then build the rest of your training around those. So let's say I was gonna pick six core movements. I would take sumo deadlifts, a weighted lunge or split squat, flat barbell press, overhead barbell press, a barbell row, probably pendle rows, and then pull-ups or assisted pull-ups. Now those exercises are pretty much gonna cover all muscle groups and burn a shit ton of calories in the process. So as a basic guideline, I would just recommend trying to improve on those six exercises and then building the rest of your training around those by throwing in your accessories and isolation exercises wherever you like. So as a general rule, I would say you could even make up maybe 50% of your time spent lifting on those six exercises. So for example, let's say you're doing a push-pull leg split. You might have flat barbell press and the OHP in your push workout. You might do five sets of each and then another 10 sets of whatever other isolations and accessory exercises you fancy. So you've done 50% on your core lifts and then 50% on whatever else. And same for your lower or leg workout. You could put your sumos and your split squats in there, five sets of each and then 10 sets of whatever accessories you fancy. And that would just be a very basic guideline for you to get on with. So you will rarely hear me advise against cardio and I'm not quite gonna go that far today either. However, what I will say is try and make up as large of a proportion of your training with resistance training as possible because essentially what you're trying to do is not just get out of this skinny fat vortex, but you're trying to stay out of it forever. And one of the things that is going to help you do that is having a higher muscle mass because that's inevitably going to push up your TDEE or maintenance calories. And then it's gonna be much more unlikely for you to ever fall back into it because one of the reasons why it's difficult to get out of being skinny fat in the first place is because you do have a low maintenance as a result of quite low muscle mass. And so even if you consume a relatively normal amount of calories, you will still be more likely to gain fat. So just try not to get too caught up into this calories in versus calories out hamster wheel because otherwise you end up just eating something. Then you go do some cardio and you're just wiping the slate clean rather than doing something productive with those calories. So if you've done all your lifting for the week, by all means, go and do some cardio. But I would say as a general rule, try and keep it to like at least a four to one ratio. So let's say you do four hours of resistance training for every one hour of cardio. So you might do four times one hour sessions for your lifting. And then you might do that hour of cardio split into however many sessions you like. When you do do cardio, I would say some HIT would be best, probably some sprints either on an exercise bike with the resistance turned up or even some actual sprints in a field if it's not fucking freezing where you live. Right then, let's tackle the nutrition side of things. So should you bulk, should you cut, or should you try one of these mythical recomp things? Well, we're gonna tackle these one by one. Let's start with bulking. No, 
you should not bulk there you go joe delaney has decided for you now obviously there is scope for personal preference in terms of the order in which you're going to tackle these things and there is certainly some kind of argument to be made for bulking first but i'm going to go out on a limb and give an actual fucking opinion because if i just keep this vanilla af and i just say do what works for you or whatever your preference is it doesn't really help anybody whatsoever so i would say that if you are actually under this definition of skinny fat what we are calling skinny fat today in this video bulking is not what you should be doing first i would only say you should be bulking if you are maybe one of those people who i described earlier who might initially think they are skinny fat but under further scrutiny realizes that they are simply just skinny so let me address this idea of a recomp or if you're unfamiliar with the term a body recomposition which essentially means the process of trying to lose fat whilst gaining muscle simultaneously and obviously i understand that that sounds ideal doesn't it why would anyone simply try and lose fat when you could lose fat and build muscle at the same time that obviously appeals to my impatient nature and i understand why it's getting kind of popular with people however there are a few things that i want to say so number one is that it's not going to be possible to any significant extent for the vast majority of people number two even for those people for whom it is a viable option it is likely only going to get them so far and at some point they would have to revert back to traditional bulk and cut phases before they can get to their actual final goal physique. Number three, it is rarely going to be the fastest route from physique A to physique B. However, it may well be the most palatable route. So if we take some skinny fat people, for example, may not be able to bear the thought of getting any skinnier or any fatter. And so they are willing to sacrifice a little bit of expediency in exchange for being able to get a bit closer to their goal physique without being more uncomfortable with themselves. The good news for you, if you're skinny fat, is that if you are skinny fat, that's likely because you've either never lifted before, not lifted for a long time, or just not been lifting very consistently and intensely. And in any of those cases, they stand in your favor in terms of increasing your immediate responsiveness to weight training in the short term. And the only caveat to that I would say is, if you are maybe 30 or above, then your best lifting days are definitely behind you and you might be better with a stricter cut and bulk approach. So how far will it get you? Well, as I said, I don't think it is a valid long-term approach because as your body shifts towards a more lean muscular physique, you will experience a lot more resistance to positive body composition changes. I.e. you'll find it harder and harder to make progress on both fronts. For example, once you hit a certain level of leanness, your body is literally just gonna stop prioritizing fat loss unless you force it into that with a consistent deficit. And if you are recomping, your calories won't be such to facilitate that. So then there's the question of a recomp versus a cut and bulk approach. Now, whilst I do think cutting and bulking in strictly defined phases will get you to the end goal faster, that just might not be a feasible approach for a lot of skinny fat people. For reasons I mentioned earlier about being uncomfortable with the thought of getting any skinnier or any fatter, which are obviously potential inevitable things that can come with bulking and cutting phases. So for those people, I would say it might be worth doing an initial six to eight week recomp phase before then transitioning into your cut or bulk as appropriate. And I will come to the specifics shortly. So if you don't qualify as a candidate to recomp, or in fact, you've just decided that you would rather get on with shit ASAP and stick to the more traditional route of cutting and bulking phases, then I would certainly suggest starting out with a cut. Now, I understand that the nature of being skinny fat is such that you will need to do a certain amount of bulking and a certain amount of cutting before you can get to your final goal physique. And technically in a theoretical sense, if you were able to undertake each of those phases perfectly efficiently and productively and not lose any momentum in the transition between those phases it wouldn't really matter which way around you did it or even how long you planned to schedule in your first couple of phases for however in practice that isn't really often the case and so there are a couple of reasons that i would recommend starting out with a cut as opposed to a bulk so the main reason is that fat loss occurs much faster than muscle gain and so you're going to see some kind of positive visual feedback much more quickly than you would if you started out with a bulk and obviously that is going to reinforce that feedback loop and help to keep you motivated and sticking to it so if you were to bulk first 
first. Yes, you might make some gains, but they would be a lot less visible under that layer of fat. Whereas if you cut first and then bulk later, at least those gains that you do make will be much more visible to you. Okay, so to summarize, one, start heavily focusing your training on trying to get better at a select few compound lifts that encompass all the major muscle groups. If you can follow a program, do so. And if you can't, then make yourself a basic one centered around those lifts. Two, keep cardio to a maximum of 20% of your training in terms of time commitment. If you have the time to train, then most of it should be spent lifting. Three, decide if you're going to recomp or cut first. For most people, I would say cut. If you're on the fatter end of the skinny fat spectrum, definitely cut and you might actually recomp a little bit by accident. Four, set a time limit on your cut or recomp phase. Remember, the goal here isn't to look shredded by the end of it. That's not really gonna happen. Instead, just focus on getting rid of the excess fat before you can then shift your focus onto building muscle. If you're recomping, I would say go for around a six to eight week initial phase before then going into an all out cut to get rid of any of that last remaining excess fat. If you cut in, give yourself 12 weeks and you might not need all of that, but most people certainly shouldn't need more. Obviously there will be some individual variants, but I'm trying to generalize. Five, set up your macros and calories. If you're cutting first, you can stick with your typical 500 calorie deficit. And if you're recomping, you want a more shallow deficit. So around 200 to 250 calories below maintenance. For both, you can just set your protein at one gram per pound of body weight. You can set your fats to 15 to 30% of total calories and make up the remainder of your calories with carbs. I'm sorry people, I just wanted to check in with a little clip before I go because I was editing that video and I am not sure if I have put enough emphasis on step one, just the raw training element of this whole scenario. So it's probably impossible for me to put enough emphasis on that. If you are watching this video, I know it dragged on a bit, don't get deterred, don't think shit, this is a lot to take in. If you can't be bothered with any of it, mate, all you need to do is go to the gym consistently, focus on getting better at a few lifts and train hard and you will gradually get out of this skinny fat situation that you may well be in. So I think that's it. Also shout out to everyone who let me use their pictures as the skinny fat examples. I'm gonna show you them now. A few of them have got pretty sick transformations. So. There is fucking hope for all of us out. Like my shit as well. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and if you are still unaware of what Squarespace do then you obviously need to catch up with my videos but I will tell you anyway. So Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that allows you to build a professional looking website without actually being or paying a professional. They've got loads of templates that you can choose from whether you want a blog, online store or a website for basically anything and all the designs automatically include a unique mobile experience so that they look sick regardless of the device that they are viewed on. You can make your images look however you like in Squarespace's own image editor, or if you have videos on YouTube or Vimeo, you can even embed those onto your pages using video blocks. If you need an online store, you can sell digital or physical products, and there is no limit to how many products you can list. So if that sounds good, check out squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you are ready to order, go to squarespace.com forward slash Joe Delaney, and that will save you 10% off your first purchase. Okay, see ya, ciao, bye. Jordy Lenny is my hero!